Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're going to take care of a job that I've been putting off. I just really didn't have time for it, and that's to modify my Win 5-inch uh, bandsaw into a vertical saw so I can cut small, thinner pieces of sheet metal, you know, 14-gauge, stuff like that. I've got a lot of little parts to make on the G for the GTO for Ruby, and I'm getting really tired of getting out the cutoff wheel and clamping it to the table and, you know, cutting it out that way. So we're going to uh, convert this saw to a vertical saw with a table and a lock so it stays in the upright position. This is the model BA4555. The older wind saws, uh, they could easily be rotated up to vertical. Uh, this one, they put a lock in it so you couldn't go to vertical with it, but uh, I'll show you how to fix that. Super simple. It's just a bolt they put in there. But uh, the plan is to uh, figure out a locking mechanism, which I've already worked on, and then we're going to get a table set up and then just have it clamp right into the vise. A lot of guys have done this before, so we're going to go ahead and knock it out too, and it should make this... Uh, this bandsaw a lot more user friendly. So let's jump in here, take a look at what I've got done already and what we need to get done. We'll bust this out video, this video out really quick and hopefully I can get back to work on a Ruby. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, this is the model BA4555, a 5-inch wind bandsaw. I bought it from Home Depot. And uh, what they did was, to keep it from going vertical, you see that hole right there? Well, that had a little uh, Allen head screw in it uh, with a locking nut, and all it did was stick out right here. So when you went to try to go to vertical, it would hit back here and stop you. And that was basically to keep the saw from flipping over backwards. So it would, it'll actually go that far. And if you can see, I've got it locked on my uh, table. Uh, I actually, this actually stoves underneath my welding table. I'll put a, uh, a little thumbnail at the end of the video if you wanna see me, uh, how I did that, it's pretty cool. But what happens is, if that saw goes that far, this whole thing's just gonna flop over. So that's why they did that. So if you go to vertical, it's, not, it's still probably going to flop over, so you're going to have to figure out some way to make sure that that doesn't do that clamp it to your bench or whatever. So let me, uh, let me put the camera in the, uh, in the tripod, and we'll take a look at what I've done already, and then uh, what we need to do. Okay, so here's the saw in the down position, and they, it comes with its own lock that locks it in the down position. And my first thought was to use this same pin and then mount something down here on this side right here. Uh, but uh, the blade is right there, and I could have got in there and d done it, but uh, I don't think it was gonna be strong enough. This aluminum's fairly thin right here. So I thought, well, I'll just use the same hole, but make my own, uh, my own plate up here. So that's what I did, and you can see it right here. Just locks in just like that. Now, this contraption right here uh, I found a piece of steel and it kind of matched this radius a little bit. So I ground it, I added to it, and I put a, a bushing in there. I went down a rabbit hole and I thought it was going to be fast and easy. It turned out to be neither. What I should have done was take, I found this in my junk pile. What I should have done was bend this to that radius a little bit and uh, drill some holes and tap uh, the aluminum like I did here and then just weld a block on here that would line up and do it that way. But uh, I thought I was being smart and uh, you know, once I started, I couldn't stop. I'm like, well, I'm in this deep, I might as well keep going. So the way this works is, all it is is a piece of like 3 8 uh, flat stock and then I cut to a radius uh, to match this radius right here. I drilled and tapped with quarter 20 tap and then uh, bolted that down. Now I screwed up, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a washer underneath each one. I got it too low and the pin would not go in. So, and I just found this ball, that's off a clutch arm for a, a GM car that mounts to the frame. I cut the threads off, welded it onto the shaft. So that's the locking plate. You can do anything. I mean, all you really need is something bolted up here. There is a spring inside here, so the bolts can't go in too deep, but you can go in at least 3 16 inside of here and not hit anything. So this works. Uh, I do need to put a little C-clip on there or something so it doesn't slide back, you know, but it clears everything. And the thing is, you have to make sure it clears the motor when it comes up. So it's got to be fairly low profile. 
but this one clears. It doesn't have to be any, you know, thing super special. I got, uh, you know, I got two hours into that thing, and it should have been a 20-minute job. It's just me going down the rabbit hole like a knucklehead. So the next step for us is to figure out how to put a plate on here. So let me back the camera away, and we'll take a look at uh, uh, what everybody else has done, and I'm just going to mimic what they did uh, to a certain, certain degree. So let's, uh, let's back it away and get some sort of table made up for this thing. Okay, guys, we got it locked in the vertical position. My lock seems to be working fine. I mean, it should after over two hours of messing with that stupid little thing. But uh, the next step is to make a table. Now, I've got a couple of pieces of scrap here I picked up at a lo local uh, metal uh, fabrication shop. Now, they, uh, most shops have drops, you know, the, uh, the, the parts they make up for uh, other customers, and then they have small pieces left over. They just stack those at this particular shop by gauge or by type, you know, hot roll, cold roll, aluminum, stuff like that. So you may want to go into their office and, hey, do you guys have any drops you sell? That way you don't have to buy a whole sheet. So you can go in their shop, dig around, and find out what you need, and they'll just charge you per square foot. Uh, it's a very economical way of doing it. Uh, nobody's going to actually give it to you, but uh, I don't think. But uh, So it's a, a good, cheap way of finding stuff for your projects, your little jobs, and stuff like that. So we're probably going to use this hot roll right here. It's about 22 by 11, so I think we're just going to slice it right in half. Then we need to put a, a, a slice in the middle. Now, there's no reason to put a gigantic table on this uh, saw because it only has a 5-inch uh, throat back here. So we're just going to make something, and I still have to store the table when I'm not using it. So uh, we're going to probably cut that in half, cut a, a figure out the center, and just cut a slot in it so it can slide over here. And then, um, like most everybody, if you've seen on uh, YouTube, they, all they do is just make some sort of uh, bracket that goes in here uh, that will hold the table up. So when you're, and then you just weld it right to the table. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. So I got to dig through my scrap. This is all done with scrap steel. And then we'll just make a bracket like this, weld it to that table, and uh, test this thing out. So let me, uh, let me get this thing cut in half real quick, and then uh, we'll figure out where to put the uh, slot so it's in the best position. Okay, I got it set up for the groove. We're gonna go in just about five inches, maybe just a little over, and that'll slide right over the blade. I got my straight edge on there so I get a nice straight cut again. Okay, and we should be able to slide this on see how it's going to work. All right, let's slide this on. Now, you guys uh, may notice that it's shorter on this side than this side. I was going to put it right down the middle, but if you look at the way the saw is set up on my table here, I'm going to be standing over here most of the time, you know, doing my cutting. So I figured, well, I'll put a little more table on this side just to make it a little easier for me. So it slides on there just like that. So we're good to go. Um, all we have to do now is find some scrap to make some sort of uh, thing that comes out with a leg here and a leg there to support the table, and then we can drop it in here and clamp it in place in the right spot. Should be fairly straightforward once we make that up. All right, I'm going to dig around in my uh, junk over there, my scrap, and see what we can come up with here. I'm thinking some one-inch square tubing or something. Let me see what I got up on the rack or over there already cut up in small pieces, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I found some scrap. I've got some uh, one by one uh, thin wall, one by one thin wall. This was a jig I made to weld uh, tubing together uh, so you can clamp it up straight. Uh, that was 20 years ago, so I think it's time to cut that up. And then a piece of uh, one by two uh, that will actually slide into the vise. It gives plenty of clamping area. It's got enough vertical surface to keep it from tipping, and you just throw it in there and tighten it down. So that should work really well. Now this is all thin wall. Uh, this is a small saw, small table. I'm not too concerned about making this heavy duty. I want to make it lightweight so I can store it easy. And frankly, uh, we're not going to be throwing a piece of, uh, you know, two by two by half inch steel, cutting it on here. We're going to be doing all lightweight stuff, lightweight saw, lightweight table. So uh, let me go ahead and cut this up. All I'm going to do is probably take this and then come this way a little bit on each side of that slice to support the table and then have it 45 and go down and weld right onto there. 
fairly simple. Uh, we'll get it all tacked up, make sure it's all square, make sure it all fits on there well, and there's no, uh, you know, something I didn't think of that could go wrong, and then we'll get it welded up and tested out. So let me get some cutting done, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, we got the parts uh, tacked together. They're at 90 degrees, hopefully. So all we got to do is figure out our spacing right here. So we got a little more table on this side, so I'm going to bring this one over a little bit more. So I'm just going to figure about uh, the center of the plate. So it slides on like this. So I'm thinking um, we're just going to go right about here and right about here. So I'll figure that out and it uh, gives us plenty to weld onto. And then we'll get those tacked on and then uh, kind of lay the plate on here, see how it's going to go. I want to weld that all up completely before I uh, tack it onto the uh, table here. So let me, uh, let me get that distance figured out. We'll get that tacked on, then we can lay the plate up on here and see where we're at. Pretty good. All right, let's see how it works out. Now I set this to clamp just the end of the uh, vise right here. So it looks pretty good right there. Let's see if the, uh, my, the table's gonna be at 90 to the blade. Pretty close, off just a little bit. I set this lock. I maybe should have set that lock after I got the table put on, but it's not super critical. Let's go ahead and slide the table on. That looks like it's going to work out pretty good right there. We'll just have to get this square. The back here isn't uh, square, so I can't go off of that. That's a little warp still. But that looks like it's going to work out pretty nicely right there. We got uh, enough room in between for all the shavings to fall out. A nice flat uh, surface here. Let's see if it is 90 degrees to the blade this way. Put my head in front of the camera there. Not exactly. We're off just a little bit, which is not good. Let me see if I can get that adjusted uh, by chopping one of these down because I need it. I for sure want it uh, 90 degrees this way. I don't want all my cuts to be off a little bit. Raise this side up so I need to lower that side a little bit to bring that, that side down. But other than that, we're looking pretty good all the way around. Let me make that adjustment and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I think we pretty much got it. I tried to adjust the wheels up here, but I pushed that over so it was where it was supposed to be and tightened it up the guide for the blade. I thought maybe that was shifted causing this problem, but it wasn't. Uh, now I lowered it down. It is still cutting square this way, so I didn't want to mess with the blade. Obviously I needed to adjust, uh, you know, my new table. Now um, it's noticeable, well for me, standing back, this thing looks like it's leaning like that, but it's just barely off but it's square right here and that's all that really matters. So I'm going to go ahead and weld up this piece all the way and get it prepped. And then we're going to actually uh, get the table on here and get it clamped and then I'll tack it. Then we'll pull it off and do uh, some more spot tacks on it. It doesn't need to be on there. I don't want to put a bunch of heat into it and have this thing turn into a potato chip on me. So we're just going to hit it, you know, here and here, a few spots on the end and a couple in the middle just to hold it on there tight really gravity will take care of most of it we just want to make sure it doesn't wander around so let me get this welded up real quick and then we'll come back and get this uh, lined up and tacked and we will be ready to test this thing out i think okay we got all clamped up runs pretty good got it pretty much centered in that blade so uh, i'm going to go ahead and get it tacked up Still running through. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off, uh, beef up these tacks a little bit, and then we'll throw it on here, check it for flatness, and then uh, do some final touches on it, give it a quick test. Okay guys, all done. It's a little warm. I'll paint this bottom later. I've got a piece of, uh, I think that's 14 gauge. Let's just cut a little square out of that. Now, 
This trigger is a dead man trigger, so uh, you have to hold it down. So I'm going to figure out, some guys just put a zip tie on there. I think I may take this handle apart and see if I can put a push button, you know, just push and lock it. Well, we'll think of something. I've got a little mini tripod here right now. I'll just jam in there. That'll do the trick. So let's, uh, let's cut this thing and see how it works. good. Just like I had hoped it would work. All right. Just like that. Got our little piece out of there. So that's going to make it a lot easier when I'm doing a lot of the work on Ruby, my GTO. Because uh, you guys know, you know, using the cutoff wheel, it's just kind of a pain. And uh, you go through a lot of cutoff wheels and you can't cut, you know, uh, intricate shapes. So I think this is going to be a really good upgrade for my WEN 5-inch saw. But uh, I'm really happy the way it turned out. Used all scrap to make it, so that's a pretty good deal. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on converting my 5-inch wind bandsaw to a vertical bandsaw with a nice little table on here. Just take it off, goes right back to its normal use. Now, uh, this wind, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Grizzly, a uh, bunch of them, Bauer, I think there's a bunch out there. They're basically identical. Uh, I think the castings even look identical. So this would probably work on any of them. And it's a really nice addition to this one, and it's going to really speed up the work on my GTO. So I'm really happy about that. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.